I'm going to show you how we can easily build an application based off of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. It's all about habit tracking. So today we're going to be using Bolt.new to create this application. We'll have authorization so that we can sign up and sign in, create our own habits, and then we can check them off as we do throughout the day. So today I have not slept yet, so I'm only 80% done. We will also be integrating with Subabase and GitHub. Okay, well, the first thing is, with Bolt.new, if you haven't signed up, you can sign up for free, but if you use the free version, you are gonna be limited to the tokens you have per day. They do reset every day, but I use the $20 version, which means that I get about 10 million tokens to use. So I won't really have a problem with this, but if you run into a lot of problems, it can be that whenever I first start out using this, I had to wait till the next day to fix that. But you're gonna have, I'm gonna have this prompt as a kind of big prompt. After I had created what I had just showed you in the introdu introduction, I went ahead and took a prompt from that, and this is what we're gonna tr try to recreate as best as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. This will be in the description. You can just copy and paste this here. Essentially what is happening while this is building, right? It's thinking right now, while this is building, it's going to try and create things with Superbase, which means that I will have to integrate that. So if you don't have Superbase, you wanna to go to Superbase and you would like to you know, sign up for an account, um, go ahead and do that. And then whenever we come here, it'll say eventually whenever it's done, you know, right now it's updating the package. Uh, whenever it's done, it will We'll try to integrate, meaning that it'll go, it's going to create all the tables, and everything necessary here and security policies here for you because we are going to have authentication as well. Now, briefly, I just want to mention my community because I've been helping other members teach them and create their AI services so that they can sell and make money from. And if you haven't used this before, what's happening is on the left hand side is the chatbot. It's everything that I've asked it to, it thought about it and it went back in here and said, okay, based on the requirements, we're going to design a habit tracking application and we may not like it, right? There's a chance that I don't like it. And what you can also do if you don't, which I did in the first iteration of this, is I took some screenshots of what people have done on Notion and said, hey, I want to look similar to this. And then it can do that. So while this is doing, we're going to come back when this is done and we'll check it out and then we can see if it works with Superbase. Okay, so it worked. And of course, since we add authentication, it means that we have to sign in. Now, in order for that to actually work, what we need to do is integrate Superbase. So at the top right here, where it has integrations, we're going to choose Superbase. Here, because I am already signed in, I've already actually connected my Superbase account to Bolt.new, which you can do, it's free. I have not paid for Superbase. I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to, you can either create a new project or if you have one existing, go ahead and choose that right now. So whatever you need to do, create that project. I'm gonna choose an existing one. I'm gonna say connect project. And now what this is going to do is on the left-hand side here, you can see it wants, it's asking to apply changes. It says Superbase migrations. Migrations are SQL files that it's going to execute in order to actually create the SQL. So if we come in here, it's saying, yeah, there's new tables, there's a habits, habits completions, and it's also, also worrying about the security. So it's adding the policies for authenticated users to manage their data. So I'm gonna click apply changes. The, this is, okay, there was a problem and that's okay. Oh, because there's already, okay, so I already had the table existing for the first iteration. Okay, you won't have this, you won't have this problem. So when you do this, I'm going to create a new sign up. So I'm going to sign up as a new user. I'm going to say, I can just, you can just name it whatever you want, whatever you want for right now. Uh, Tyler123 at gmail, gmail.com. Password is test123, test123. I'm going to create the accounts. Okay, great. So I created the account. Now we're actually seeing the habit tracker. So this looks already a little bit different than what I had first showed you because I'm doing this again. So I'm going to add a habit. Let's say I want to say running. So let's do add habit. Okay, this is, I kind of don't like this. I can, I can check these, right? I don't like this progress bar. Okay, and this is great. I kind of, I like how on the left hand side that I can add I can add these, actually, that doesn't even kind of work. Um, the, I, the, the emojis are kind of not working, that's fine. But I do like how on the, uh, it adds my habits here, I can delete them. Uh, I can, for each day, I can kind of say whether I did them or not, and it is auto updating. However, I don't like the way this looks. So here's what I'm gonna do. I search for atomic habits grid like, so as you can see, like something like this, uh, these dots represent what you've done for that day. The initials are kind of, 
the letters here are like what the actual habit was. But let's scroll down a little bit further. I think what I saw, oh yeah, I think this was it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, I want something more like this. So I'm gonna take the screenshot go over here. This is this is going to happen a lot, right? This is kind of what people would say vibe coding maybe, but I didn't like it. I took a screenshot of what I do like and we're going to see if it like if it actually conforms to that and, you know, makes this better and more aligned to what I would like, right? Because the atomic habits thing is like a grid-like structure. So let's see. Okay, so it did update. This is a little better. Um I I kind of like this. It doesn't look the best but that's okay. Let me try and add another habit. Oh yeah, we need to change this as well because I can't even I can't even like see what that says. So if I add the habit, okay, it, it does save that here and it does auto populate. I do like how smooth the transitions are. Okay, and this progress bar is showing for that day. I do like how it says like last Tuesday, last Wednesday. Although it doesn't. Oh, it has today at the bottom. Oh, it's like kind of reversed. Okay, we can fix that. So now we need a couple things. First off, I kind of want this a little bit more together. Like everything looks a little too far apart and it's a little bit maybe too big. Uh, so I want to make it smaller and need the dates from today to be at the top here where it says last Tuesday, uh, where last Tuesday is. I need it to be the top there and on the habits. When I add the habit, you know, when I click down this icon, I can't even like see what's going on here. And I think I just wanted to add the habit. I mean, this, this pop-up is okay, I guess, but let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, so what I did was for the habit, I said to basically, I can't see the emojis, make this simpler, maybe like a drop down. then also uh, basically reverse the dates here. So today is at the top and this grid is a little big. So let's see if we can make that a little smaller and let's see what it does with that. Okay, so far I do like this. So now we have today at the top, these are a little smaller. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see if this fixed. No, it did not fix that, okay. That is still not fixed. Okay, so it did kind of fix it. I do like this a little bit more. I could probably just, this is probably stored in the code somewhere, so I can just add more emojis if I want to, or I can just ask it to. And then I can add the description here. So if I click plus here, it adds it to on the left-hand side, all my actual habits, and then on the right-hand side, it updates this as well. Okay, now what I wanna actually do is show you how Superbase is integrated into this. Okay, so again, at superbase.com, you sign in, I'm going to connect with my GitHub. You can also connect with SSO, however you want to. Okay, now I'm signed in. I'm going to choose Tyler AI. That is my free plan. I can have up to five projects. I think only two can be used at once maybe, but I'm going to click on the full stack app. That is the one that I have created. Now coming in here for the first time, I am in the project overview for the full stack project. This, there's a lot of information going on here. And I know this is your first time. It can kind of be like a lot, but let's just go over this really quick. And this has updated. This is actually a little different than what I've seen just a couple weeks ago. So even within the last week or two, this has been updated, the UI. So on the left-hand side here, I can go to table editor and SQL editor. Just click on table editor. Now I'm going to see all of the tables that I have created for this project. So we have one called habits. And so this, these are all of the habits that I've created. I have created some from another user ID, which I'll get to in a minute. Then I have habit completion. So this is basically saying that for a specific habit ID and for a user ID, I've completed it at this date. You may not need to create two tables. You know, I pro probably really don't need to, but I think to, to separate uh, from each user. So when I'm signed in, for this user ID here, and I know this can be a lot at once, there are only two total you different user IDs. And what's happening is I'm only seeing my user ID because it's using authentication that whenever I sign in, that's all I'm gonna see and that's what you want. So now when, we, when you signed in, at the top left you see the schema public, which keeping all the schema public is not the best practice. That's just not for the scope of this tutorial. But if we go, go here and choose auth, and then you go to users at the bottom left. This is gonna this is gonna show you all three of the users that I've signed in with. So you know you can use like dummy data as well. They don't have to be actual emails. I don't have any like anything how to um, like reset my password or anything because the top two are just dummy emails. Or maybe it's somebody's email, but I, I don't I don't have that email. So basically, in the schema public by default, this is where it's gonna create everything. Here are my habits. Here's the name and the emoji assigned to them. So because we've done authentication, whenever we sign in, we can only see my habits, which here I have four, but we definitely saw way more than four in the actual habits database. And that's the way you want it. You want it to be, you want to separate 
every user's um, habits. Now, we've integrated Supabase. Now, the next thing I want to do is integrate GitHub. So at the top here, at the top right, integrations, and you see there's also a Stripe. We're not getting the Stripe, but we're going to go to GitHub. So make sure you do have a GitHub account in order to do this. So I'm going to choose this. I'm going to, what I can do here, Tyler Programming, that is my GitHub. I've already, when you do this for the first time, you'll just have to sign up or, you know, register your GitHub account. What is this called? This is, see, Atomic Habits Tracker. Atomic Habits App. Okay, so it's going to create the repository. So we're, we can go to my GitHub. We're going to say Start Building. And what it's going to do is going to create the repository and it should save all of this to there by itself, or we may need to. So let's go to my GitHub account. I'm going to go to github.tyler programming. Let's look at my repositories here, atomic habits. What does this say? Yep. So I have everything here. Now, of course, I don't really, I have a very simple readme. So let's go ahead and make a change to this. Let's go back here. So what I want to do is say, hey, can you update the readme to follow the flow of the project and how to install it and also explain Netlify, which I will get to in just a minute. This is where we're going to deploy our application to so that we have a public URL. Okay, so it it's updated the readme. It says it's created a comprehensive readme that kind of explains everything. Now, if I go to my GitHub, we can actually see here that it updated the readme as well. I didn't have to explicitly say, can you push this, uh, push this, push this change to my GitHub? It already has it here. And you can kind of see it's kind of, you know, telling you how to clone a repository, how to install everything, how to run a development server, all the database schemas, how to deploy with Netlify, which I'm about to get to. And that's really all that you would need to know. So now let's go back to bolt.new. Now at the top right, there's a small blue deploy button. Let's click that. And now it's going to say, you know, it automatically prompts deploy this application. So it's going to deploy the application to Netlify, which is, is going to host this application for us. And it's going to give us a public secure URL. Now the public, so public secure URL will have Netlify in the actual name, as you can see right here. So fancy Halva random alphanumeric Netlify.app. So it's not something, you know, it's free, right? I don't have to pay for this. I don't pay for anything for Netlify. Uh, but so you kind of get like a funky name. Now you can change this if you have your own domain, etc. Then you have like, you actually have better authentication set up. We don't have the best authentic authentication set up with Supabase, but let's go ahead and right click this, open in a new tab. And you can see here, it's the first thing to do is I need to sign in. So I signed in to see Tyler, I think one, two, three, at Gmail, test one, two, three. And if I do, I should have the same exact setup because it's all connected to the same database. I just now can, on my dashboard, I can also go on my phone and do the same thing. So I don't know if you can see here, maybe you can't, but I, I got on my phone and these are the same habits. This is just how it looks on the phone. So I can click these, you know, it's going to update. It's going to update everything. Uh, on Monday, I apparently read and meditated. Uh, that's a lie, but that's okay because this is everything. And because I have this public secure URL, I can use this anywhere because this is now mine. Okay, this is great. Now, I've not only created an application pretty quickly, I've also deployed it to Netlify. So now it's hosted on a server that I can use anywhere. I've also integrated Supabase which is an online database. I have the free version, but we're able to create a project and we have authentication and we integrate this with GitHub. So now that we have all this project code, making applications like this is amazing. And with all the AI tools that we have right now, it makes it so much simpler. We're able to do so many integrations and not even have to leave the page unless you just had to sign up for GitHub or sign up for Supabase for the first time, which is fine. It's still easy and simple to do now. There are so many things that we can create. I would love to know what you want to create down in the description below. I am offering one-on-one -on -one coaching for a period of time. So let me know. I'll have the strategy call in the link in the description, as well as my school community, where I'll have all of this set out for you as well and help you build your applications. Thank you for watching. Here are more videos. I will see you next time.